Uh, thank you, Kesha. Uh, I know it's the kind of it's reaching the end of a long day, but just to set the context of this session, I think if you look at OAC in general, uh, we've got three big constituents out here. We've got uh, media owners who truly are the backbone of the industry. We have a lot of people representing agencies, uh, the guys who do the planning and the buying. And I think the third part of the whole ecosystem is the clients, the people who you know, actually sometimes make the calls in the outdoor. Uh, this morning when Girish from KPMG teed off the session, I think he made a, a key point. He talked about the fact that uh, the amount of thinking that goes into the more traditional print and television, which in India is 37% you know, television, 31% print of spends, or marketing spends, and then the relatively smaller but fast-growing digital, which is about 80%, 90%, and then the fact that outdoor has stayed between 5 and 6% of most marketeers' spends. I think that was the, the point that he, he, he teed off this morning. Uh, what, what this panel hopes to do is really share uh, the marketer's perspective. What are their expectations from the outdoor industry? What are their expectations uh, from the agencies? So that's, that's really what we're going to restrict uh, the next 45 minutes of our discussion to. Uh, just want to tee off with this little uh, cartoon and uh, yeah, that's where it is. I think what it says is that the outdoor as a medium, it pretty much does all the obvious things. You, know, you get your pack shot, you get your lead line, you get your, a little bit of your copy, you get the whole call to action. But how often does it actually tell a story, right? And you realize that brands increasingly are seeking to connect with consumers at a more emotional level, right? So I think the challenge that we see is how does outdoor move from just being a reminder medium to something that can engage consumers and actually get into an experiential zone. And I think with the increase in digital, I think that opportunity stares at us in the face. So the really the point about the move of out of home from being primarily a method to drive attention to driving engagement. I think that's one of the you know, key issues that marketers want to address in this, in this whole thing. Uh, I did, over the last hour or so, talk to some prominent media owners out here you know, Numi Mehta, who's an old veteran in the business and, you know, who's now doing a stint with the International Outdoor Association, and said, what are media owners' expectations from marketeers? So tell me, you know, what do you think that marketeers should do better? And I think uh, three points came out loud and strong. I want to share this with my fellow panelists and with all of you. I think, one, a lot of media owners resent the fact that they're being kept away from marketeers, right? So agencies are telling them very clearly that, hey, you know, that's my client, I'll handle him, you can meet me, but just don't go and meet, meet my client directly. Bit of a concern, I think it's, it has to work, be worked at both ends. I think as marketeers, we need to go out and seek out a few media owners, because if he understands some of the dynamics of our business, if he's able to create creative solutions, I think that opens up a whole, a whole, whole issue. Uh, I think the second issue is really the fact that the low focus on, on creative, right? If you look back at agencies, the creative prima donnas are making television commercials. Today, a lot of them are doing great work on digital. Uh, print has always been you know, pretty much in focus. I think the fact that a lot of out of home has been kind of relegated as a, as a cut paste or the, or the last mile in the value chain. I think the third ask, and the slide seems to have missed that out, is really the fact that budgets have always stayed very minuscule. You're always talking of five or six percent of the mix. I'm pleased to say that in our panel, we've got some marketeers here who believe that that's way too little, and I've actually pushed the limits to a much higher level. But as a rule in industry, it remains at the 5 to 6% of the marketing mix level. And I think now with the coming of digital, there's an opportunity to see that grow, right? Radio and out of home in that sense are more experiential. They happen, you know, incognito, they happen on the street. So there is a huge opportunity and there is, you know, chances to grow. I'm also going to tee it off before I, kick, I get my panelists' views in what are the key challenges that marketers face vis-a-vis -vis out of home. I think the first thing, clearly, it is not the primary medium, right? So I think we have to get, be absolutely real about it. Lots of budgets primarily go behind television because it's easiest to tell the brand story to TV. Today, digital, the responsiveness of digital, the easy measurability of digital is huge, so digital is growing. Print has always been a kind of cornerstone. So this is not the primary medium, though in some categories it is fast emerging as one. The other point I touched upon, which was common to what uh, media owner said, is the agency focus, or the lack of agency focus. The fact that, I'm talking of creative agencies, the fact that the best creative minds are not necessarily thinking through great outdoor solutions. 
And I think the third one that all of you should recognize is just as agencies are in a sense custodians of the client's money, within a corporation, the marketeer is the custodian of the brand, is the custodian of the, the money that you know, is allocated, allotted to him from the CEO. And therefore, the weakness in terms of the metrics that out of home delivers uh, is always an issue. Relative to certain other, other media, mediums, you know, the weakness of, of metrics is an issue. The other part is the inability to attribute what part of the outdoor is actually working. So the whole attribution and metrics is an area that has always been an issue. So these are the kind of key challenges that the marketing community faces. Uh, we're fortunate to have a great panel out here. So I'll you know, just quickly tell you, I think we have wide representation. Uh, so we've got Ankit Desai, who's head media and digital marketing for Marico. Uh, FMCG, so I think we'll get a great perspective. Uh, we have Anand Dubey, who's the head marketing uh, for Mahindra and Mahindra's financial services. Uh, we've got Gayatri, uh, who heads marketing, Copcom, and uh, CSR for Total in India. So lubricants is a category, and she's previously been with Telecom with, with uh, Vodafone, so we'll get a great perspective from her. Uh, we have Pramod, who's associate VP Media, Kotak Mahindra Bank, so banking and financial services. And in roles in my past, I've, I've been with HP, with Motorola, and with PepsiCo. So I guess we've got a kind of good representation of FMCG, financial services, lubricants, telecom, the works pretty much. So we're all set. Uh, so I just kick this off by, you know, starting with, uh, with, uh, with Ankit and really, you know, asking you, Ankit, what really are the key challenges that you face vis-a-vis -vis outdoor? And uh, you know, what has been you know, some experiences that you think have really made, made, made it worth its while and why you'd like to grow that, that part of the business? Sure, thanks. So uh, I think just to take a step back, uh, as marketers, uh, one of the things that we do when we start planning for our brands is to look at what's the task that will drive business for me, right? And basis that you arrive at your brand task and therefore your media task. A lot of times, uh, as you rightly said, right, because there's lack of attribution, lack of measurement, uh, you just don't know what role to assign uh, OH as a platform, right? And therefore, you just sprinkle it on top of any and every plan that you can afford to. Uh, and that's really, I think, the core of the genesis of uh, where the issue begins. Uh, having said that, I think uh, over the years, uh, you know, there've been, there's been some empirical experience that marketers have had where they know that OH as a platform is effective. However, no one knows really how to sharply define how to get that effectiveness every time they activate the medium. Uh, you know, and that's, that's really the big problem. Uh, so in my mind, I, honestly, if I, I look at the platform, I look at medium, OH is brilliant in a sense where all other media uses content and then overlays advertising to attract the consumer. You have this medium where the message is actually the content. Yeah, and it's the only medium globally uh, that does this, right? So if you look at digital, it has uh, a lot of content and then you have some advertising. If you look at television, of course, the model has always been there. If you look at radio, you look at print, all of it, versus outdoor where the communication, the message itself is the content, right? But are we doing enough to take, um, you know, advantage of it? You know, honestly, I think, and I was talking to some of my co-panelists earlier, I think uh, this ecosystem has fallen into a mindset where we look at ourselves as real estate owners who have to sell their real estate to people who will put up some messaging on top of it. Yeah? Versus saying that, hey, uh, I have a medium, and how can I use it to collaborate with you to engage your consumers. Yeah, and, and the moment you have that shift of mindset, uh, the conversation can literally flip itself on its head. Right? Uh, one of the things that has already happened uh, you know, across all other media is the fact that uh, multi-screen planning is a way of life. Right? Consumers today are no longer consuming one media at a time. Right? Uh, is it applicable to outdoor? Definitely is in my mind, right? Today, uh, you're, when I say uh, you, I mean any consumer who is exposed to outdoor is also exposed to a multi-sensory experience, right? He always, he or she always has uh, his phone in the pocket 
and therefore as a medium today you are actually competing with a device that can give the consumer a chance to have multi sensory experiences and therefore are we doing anything to beat that uh, you know and these are the kind of questions oh. that keep me awake uh, if we are you. able to somewhere uh, engage ourselves in trying to find answers to these i'm sure uh, you know the rest will fall in line okay great uh, i just take this across to uh, anand and really want to get your sense of the financial services industry i know that you guys are you know relatively larger users versus let's say marico or an fmcg in general and what has been your experience with with the outdoor medium uh, would you like to share your perspective yeah i mean uh, from a bfsi of of course the medium is seen just as a reminder medium and and that's not the fault of a marketer or a media owner or agency i mean uh, the way we were talking about the attribution the measurement matrix etc uh, in the entire value chain oh is 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 not there as as what television or digital would be uh, we we we've seen a television first campaign we've seen digital first campaign but we've not heard of a oh first campaign uh, bfsi of course can handle it very well because the dwell time the way the, the way you can integrate it with the digital that that can be done very effectively but but beyond beyond bfsi i would say uh, and coming to the creativity piece of it uh, the creative brilliance is missing but at the same time efforts are being done from marketers as well as agencies to to you know get in in sync with with any other medium i mean i don't know just show of hands of uh, how many core creative team members are here in the room not many so that answers <laughs> so we have media owners here we have media buying agencies here we've got buying experts here but when it comes to creativity we 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 are always looking at creative adaptations so i think the need of the r is shift from creative adaptations to media adopt okay. adoption okay. of of oh so that i would say would make a lot of sense bfsi of course has not used it to the level uh, we've seen a lot of adapts happening in fact i was talking to somebody i said a lot of time i have seen not adapts of just print ads at times i am used to see adapts of even brochures going on oh so <laughs> so imagine what would the consumer really you know in in whatever dwell time he has would really gauge out or stuff so yes uh, and over a period of time yes the marketers are changing sure. the shifts are happening we've seen lot of good campaigns by bmsi which are very uh, tactical very contextual uh, and which is of course been endearing set of communication so yeah so th that okay. that's so thanks alan Uh, one interesting data point that i picked up in the course of today was the fact that transit media has gone up significantly right it was a time when out of home was largely billboards and bus shelters today the quality of airports the metros the railway stations have gone dramatically and fact is that a lot of these places are high ambient places where people not just see a brand and counter brand but can also experience a brand uh, i really want gayatri to come in at this stage and you know as marketing head for total in india and they are significant users of you know you know aero bridges as many of you may have noticed is what is your perspective in terms of you know what can the out of home industry do to yeah. to 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 clients in general and how can this whole whole perspective of the whole business get more synergistic in sure so i think let me first start with some good news for the group here and then talk about what have been some of the problems that we've been facing at total when we plan a campaign and that could lead to the us you know from the group here at large um in the lubricants category especially the car lubricant category if you uh, if you see uh, 80% of the car population about 28 million cars today are in 15 to 16 cities and hence as a marketer when we evaluated our media mix we realized that there's no point doing tv right so here's an example of a brand category that's actually leading with out of home and to prove this uh, in terms of whether this is working or not when we do research and we have a huge statistics here that says that almost 38% of the depth of awareness that consumers have on car lubricants is coming from out of home uh, only next to tv which is at 52% uh, 
Um, so, uh, so what I'm trying to get at is that uh, I don't think marketeers are not realizing the importance, and I don't think that marketeers are not creatively thinking. We are. I mean, in, in uh, example of Total, we've been glorifying the pack, uh, you know, which otherwise we would not think of doing, uh, you know, and which we don't do in the in the digital videos, for instance, is to establish ourselves in the category. Mm -hmm. So that's one part of the you know the positive story. But what keeps me scrambling when we are organizing you know, a campaign for ourselves is that you're constantly, you know, we don't have huge budgets to be present all through the year. And why should we, right? Why should we be there during the monsoon time? So we come pre-monsoon, we come post-monsoon. But every time we're trying to plan a campaign, we are scrambling to find uh -huh. sites which are dear to us, but then we are told that they're not available. So I don't know if this proactively, there could be a solution to something like this where you have a bid system. Again, I'm just thinking aloud, uh, where marketeers could actually block sites knowing the seasons that they're gonna come in. That's number one. Number two, in companies like Total, which, is, uh, you know, which are not fully autonomous uh, for the country, and we have a lot of approvals that we need to take from people sitting in Paris who have no idea about what happens on the Indian roads. Uh, it gets so difficult to sell this medium because there is no third party measurement. So I think that's my second ask, right? And third, of course, you know, how, how strongly we can monitor and mobilize ourselves every time there is an issue or actually even to know that what we have put out there is actually working or not. I know there are uh, media agencies that have started, you know, Postoscope has a tool, Madison, I was speaking to someone here, has a tool. Uh, but are the impressions that are calculated from that absolutely correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I know instances where impressions have actually been more than TV, which kind of don't make sense, which could be because of duplication. So, uh, so I think these are the three big things that would be my ask from the group here. Great. And right. collectively, yeah. Thanks, Gayatri. Uh, I'll just take this across to, uh, to Pramod from Kotak Mahindra Bank. I think really want to understand, you again are very big users of out of home. So what has been your experience thus far? Yeah, so uh, frankly, out of home media is very dear media to us. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, the reason being, uh, most of the times, uh, market gets to know that this campaign is bro broken because if it's on outdoor, that means Kotak has started the campaign. <laughs> so this is this is the belief people carry with uh, for our campaigns, and of course there are, there are other reasons like it gives impact, it adds awareness, and. Uh, it is, it provides halo effect on other media as well. Uh, and the technical reasons like affinity to my target group, which is 70% of the inner, their awake times, they're out of home. So given all that combination out of media works for us, but that work is in belief, right? Frankly, the way I would put it, if I'm not exaggerating, if I'm saying this, that out of media actually adds, it gives confidence uh, it, it's, it's a confidence statement for a brand stature, uh -huh. right? So whoever doing advertising uh, on out of media, out of home media, it's actually a confidence statement. But beyond that, if I look, uh, I s see other media, the way digital is growing, okay? Uh, I remember uh, Bill Gates said that uh, uh, we always overestimate uh, change in, uh, in change next. happening in next two years and underestimate the change that would occur in 10 years. If you look, look back 10 years, then you would realize and see the digital media, the way it has grown, and you look at outdoor at that point of time, we are still the same, right? So I remember 10 years back uh, when I was in MRUC, I was doing this research for outdoor uh, media, measurement of outdoor, iOS, but, uh, and we were wondering that this result would have that butterfly effect and soon, soon up, India will have a currency and all that, nothing happened, okay? So pigs didn't fly. But nowadays when I see and the way uh, the every day the things are happening, every day we are measuring how many accounts we have got, the things are getting extremely critical. It's extremely data driven, it's uh, ROI driven and this is the only media where there is no intrusion, right? Uh -huh. People actually consume that media because they want to consume that media. But at the same time, this media is getting challenged by lack of measurement. And we, we are talking about this for last 10 years. Not only that, if you look at other media, they are, they are getting upper hand. Like for in TV, uh, there is HD. I want to see my brand in the right quality, right context, okay? 
Uh, on digital, you can definitely improve your quality. But in outdoor media, for last 10 years, I haven't seen much of uh, uh, modernization, digitization. I think if I look at global examples, they are producing phenomenal campaigns. But that's not happening in India. Of course, I'm not saying that's completely not happening. It is happening. But the ratio is very small. And every advertiser would like to see their brand at the, you know, at the right context, in the right environment, and the, you know, not at the shabby uh, kind of maintained uh, holdings. So I think my ask would be, yes, modernization, possible, not possible, where are, what's the timeline, and measurement. Okay, great. So I think what you heard loud and clear from a lot of the panel was that the need for the outdoor industry to, you know, get more metric focused, you know, give us numbers that we can believe and that we can rationalize within our organizations that, uh, you know, this kind of attribution can be ascribed to my outdoor campaign. So I think that's something that the industry certainly needs to work. Having said which, I think let me counter it to uh, my fellow marketeers here, is that on an average, if 5 to 6% of your spend is on outdoor, and let's assume for whatever reason, you know, you're 20, 30%, you're off your budgets because you don't get enough of, uh, you know, proper, proper metrics. Let's look at digital, right? We just saw this morning KPMG say that about 20% of client spends goes to digital marketing. Now, very few marketers can put their hand on heart and tell, tell us that, you know, almost all my digital marketing money is well spent, right? You know that some of the largest sites have about 25% of responses happening by bots, mm. right? And that's unreal, right? So you're talking of 25% of digital spends being, you know, kind of, you know, going into thin air and versus just 5% of your spend in outdoor out of which a small fraction may be misspent. So I think somewhere along some recalibration possibly need, needs to happen at the marketing end. But the point that I want all of you to address is, I think very clearly, I think marketing has fallen short in terms of pushing our agencies for sharper and better creative solutions for outdoor. You know, some of you Mumbai here will remember that many years back, Hutch launched a campaign in Mumbai purely on outdoor. I mean, there's very few people in Mumbai in the year 1997 who remember seeing when Hutch turned pink. This was pre-Vodafone. It was entirely a campaign run outdoor. Right? We've seen the power of what Amul has done, you know, built over outdoor many years. Of course, now they use digital to a large extent. So there have been brands that have been able to use outdoor very sharply, very creatively to create huge impact. So do you see the case for marketeers challenging their agencies to come up with uh, solutions specifically on outdoor? I, I don't think we do that enough, according to me. Um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, we were trying to do a campaign on digital, pure digital. And we, uh, we said we want to meet this uh, digital platform in the category of auto uh, mm -hmm. and meet them with our digital agency and do a brainstorming to look at how effectively we can launch this campaign in an innovative way. Now, I don't think I would have ever asked that question of the, of the outdoor agency that we have. Uh, because maybe we've, it, it, it's been going on for a while that we don't do this and you know, we've sort of, maybe we're just taking what is there and we're mm -hmm. not asking enough. Um, so I, I do own up to that, that we need to do more of this. Uh, and it's possible, right? And I'll give you an example, recent example of, um, of how effectively Google is using. Uh, and, and, and again, the idea there is the most important thing, that they are taking that idea and finding new ways to say that in outdoor. Or for example, Apple, which is uh, shot on iPhone campaign. It's n nothing innovative about the outdoor. It's just this, the, the idea itself is so strong that outdoor is just glorifying it. So, so I think it's important for marketers to, for us to do this in a, more of, which is to focus on the idea and then see if outdoor can actually glorify that or not. Ankit, anything from FMCG? Yeah, sure. So, no, so first up, I think I completely agree with what Gayatri said, right? I, I think the need to collaborate to get uh, outdoor owners to actually come and be part of the process yeah. is super critical. But having said that, I think it's also about uh, measurement. Yeah, so unfortunately, we've been talking about measurement for the past decade or so, uh, and we keep talking about it to the extent that now we have, um, you know, number of agencies into number of measurement surveys, uh, and that doesn't help the cause. So if you look at it, you know, if, at a macro level, in terms of creative input and spends, you spend the most on the medium that is most measured and that you're most confident of delivering your objective. 
Yeah, so TV, sure. for example, we spend a lot of time and money uh, getting the film just right because we know how critical it is and we know we, we can measure the output and the outcome uh -huh. to an extent. Uh, versus here where, you know, finally it's a gut call and therefore how much of my time or my team's time do I need to put behind something like this? So, you know, honestly, in my mind, it comes down to saying, are we serious about measurement? Uh -huh. And if we get that right, a lot of the other things that we spoke about in terms of contribution, in terms of, you know, place of outdoor in this larger scheme of things, in terms of our objectives, should fall in place. Okay, great. Uh, before I just get across to Anand uh, on this point, whether we've challenged the creative agencies enough, I think the point that I also want to take about what uh, both Gayatri and Ankit briefly touched upon. I think one is metrics clearly are an issue, but I think the other realization that, you know, as marketers we need to understand is that with the growth of smartphones, right, you're talking of 300 million smartphone users, on the base of which this whole ecosystem of Uber, Ola, Amazon sits pretty. Now, I think that opens up a lot of opportunity for ambient media and out of home because just putting a QSR or asking a consumer to take a picture of a billboard or something he sees in a mall or an airport can actually result in clear attribution and moving him to your next step in the kind of funnel of purchases. So do you think in the context of what's happening with digitization at large, uh, you know, out of home creative can become far more responsive. So this is not about a st static vinyl 40 by 20 that's, you know, you know, stuck on a large billboard that is inanimate. Now it's as animate as, this, you know, I'm, I'm planning my next ride on my, on, my, on my Ola and I'm taking a picture of this thing, oh, you know, this is a site that I can quickly go through while I'm waiting for my cab to arrive. So I think, are there opportunities with digitization that we're missing completely? Of course, yes. I mean, uh, and let's understand and let's ask ourselves, I don't think we've done enough and more. Um, and, and that's something which marketers need to, you know, dwell, they, they need to discuss internally. Uh, and, and hence, create a brief which is an integrated media brief. So when we roll out a, or, or launch a product, there has to be an integrated media brief where you integrate various mediums through the digital overage part of it. I mean, today we've seen the emergence of smartphones, the way the multimedia things are working, and, and it is measurable. It is measurable, uh, you know, the... Uh, a lot of campaigns, uh, I would remember in terms of a lot of download campaigns which uh, uh, Telecom has done or which a lot of uh, OTT guys have done. They do a, do a integrated stuff where you do a mobile digital, which is mobile marketing and uh, digital OH marry together. So that's definitely there. Uh, there has to be a change in the mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we all re-Christian uh, uh, outdoors to OOH out of home, I think, more than a decade back, or maybe more. Uh, but we still are restrictive in our thinking of, of that 20 by 40. That's not the case. So OOH is now anything which is moving around us. Like you said, okay, I am sitting in a cab, I see something, I check on a QR code, get information, maybe walk into a mall and got a pop-up on my mobile through that outdoor thing that, hey, I'll get a 15% off on, let's say, XYZ store. So that kind of, you know, media integration, if that can happen, that will definitely create a lot of confidence uh, amongst the marketers, Absolutely. as far as the outdoor is concerned, as far as the overall OH is concerned. So, that, so of course, the DOOH, that's, that's the buzzword, that married with the integrated other mediums, radio, for instance. A marriage of radio, mobile marketing, and OH works very well in a digital environment. So, yeah, so, so that will help do the measurement also. That will also build confidence, and that will also at least make us work hard, start thinking beyond regular stuff. That's how the entire creative juices will also Absolutely. start flowing and thinking that, hey, listen, let, let's, let's create something which is endearing to the consumers. Sure. That, that's my view. Sure. Pramod, would you like to add to this? Yeah. So uh, in terms of digitization, uh, we have done quite experiments like uh, uh, Latin long uh, of outdoor and doing Facebook advertisement. Uh, and that had worked, but uh, to add to the creative part or the brief part, uh, what happens is when we send brief to the agencies, uh, the brief goes with the mark what markets, what they have to do, what's the budget and all, 
and uh, finally agency comes up with the plan and then we finally go with the plan. But what doesn't happen is uh, uh, the kind of uh, innovations, you know, what we expect, that won't happen and I tell you there is a reason for that because what we expect as an innovation is, I innovation is I think uh, is an our creative, okay. So uh, what we do is we never use more than six words and we use visual and uh, that's the way we, uh, we would like to have our innovation. David Ogilvy himself had said, no, don't use more than 12 words, right? So that's our innovation. But when I say innovation, innovation is not what you will do with the hoarding. Innovation is what you can do with the media. Like you said, we have to go beyond uh -huh. and we have to find out the strength of the media and that's not happening. I'm not uh, holding agency to responsible for that, but because there are not right kind of opportunities available, even their hands, I think, are, uh, are tight and be because of the same thing happening over and over again. So that's why I would expect, you know, even media owners or media agencies, if, if you know, there is some kind of digitization is possible where I can actually, and currently, as I told you, my every day we measure how many accounts we have got, so that kind of challenge where outdoor can help us in any way to overcome that challenge because that media is everywhere, we are game. Yeah. Okay, so just kind of quickly summarizing from this part, I think I'd say that the second ask that the marketing community has from the out of home industry really is the fact that with the you know, growth of digitization and the internet economy and 300 billion smartphone users, I think to what extent can we have out of home totally integrated into the plan. And we really want ideas from you, not that this is purely your responsibility. I think the recognition of the fact that now it's not just a static billboard, and I don't just mean digital out of home, I think it's a fact that the things you can do even with a static billboard armed with your smartphone. And how does this work, which is the cross influence of two mediums. For example, radio and out of home can work synergistically because you're driving, you're listening to the radio, there's a billboard that counters you. So you've kind of seen two mediums. You know, I'd like to talk of an example, you know, a well-quoted example of Volvo last year during the Super Bowl in the US. It was a great example of, of mixing two mediums. Uh, what they realized was they couldn't afford the big bucks that the Mercedes and the other big automobile majors spent on, on the Super Bowl, but they had a simple digital campaign that said every time you see an automobile commercial on the Super Bowl, all you got to do is hashtag Volvo and the name of someone you love, and one winner will get a brand new Volvo car. But what happened was across the United States with those, you know, 150 odd million viewers watch the Super Bowl, every time they saw a Mercedes or a Ford or a GM spot, they were tweeting Volvo. That was great use of, you know, television which everyone watched with digital and suddenly you were influencing two medias to kind of competitively out, out maneuver your competition. So I think there are opportunities. Just one last round and I really want to hear from uh, each of you is what are examples of, of, of great innovative use of outdoor that either your brands have used or you've seen that you believe uh, you know, is something that, that can, be, can be kind of you know, explored in the future? Sure. So, um... You know, I don't think I'm going to quote any flashy examples here because uh, honestly, uh, you know, putting illumination and shutouts uh, isn't my concept of innovation per se. But uh, I think it's about uh, disruptive usage of the platform, right? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, there have been places where we've realized that you don't really need to go format out and you can go context out or moment out. Uh, and, uh, you know, deploy the platform much more effectively uh -huh. and efficiently. Uh, so in my mind, I think that's an innovation, right? Because you're looking at the platform in a very, very different manner and making it work that much harder to reach out to your consumer more effectively. So we've had a couple of those where we've had youth brands and, you know, we've gone and targeted them around places where we believe the context is just right. Uh -huh. So for example, we have a brand called Livon and we've activated the brand to go out to spaces around salons. Right? And we, we believe that that's a catchment area where it is top of mind to look good and the brand has a role to play and yet uh, you know, can provide a solution. Uh, and we've seen dramatic results from there, right? In terms of more in terms uh, of business in that oh. city, in that geography, uh, but we don't have much else to go by. But I'm saying those kind of uh, solutions uh, 
would be an effective, innovative way to use our data. Great. Uh, I'll just go across to Gayatri, but just to, just to amplify that point, I think it's an interesting point, and you know, maybe I'll get the panel's reactions. It's very often a lot of ideas strike a business as they see the use. Uh, for example, when I was in HP, we realized that an important moment when people place their laptops in trays, exactly. so when you go to throw a security check, you know, they ask you to take your laptop off your you know, backpack and put it onto a tray, and we said that's a great moment to queue an HP laptop. That's what our business is about. And then we went scurrying back to our agency, who in turn worked with some of the contractors, saying how do we brand the trays on which security check happens on laptops. So do you see instances when you've had to kind of work closely with agencies to think through innovative outdoor solutions? Yeah, we've had to. With Total, I think, uh, you know, lubricant is a very low involvement category, right? And it's very difficult to actually figure out when exactly the consumer is looking to buy. So therefore, you know, the, the distance from queue to action to reward becomes extremely dif difficult for us to figure out. But what we've been trying to do is an interesting cluster approach where we actually, uh, there's nothing really innovative about the format, but it's just the way we've been buying the format, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the placement, per se, uh, has been around garages and uh, workshops uh, so that we, we get closer to the queue part so that the action happens real quick. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's something interesting that we've done. Uh, one example that I would want to also mention, and actually Brendan mentioned this uh, native content, right? Uh, I, th I think very, it's very important that brands start doing that. Uh, a couple of brands that I feel have actually might have done a great job on that was the Airtel Open Network campaign. Uh -huh. I mean, as, as an ex-Vodafone person, I really thought that was genius. Uh, it, just, uh, it just, you put the power back in the hands of the consumer, truly speaking. Uh, and interestingly, it wasn't just Airtel consumers, but others would also actually come in and use that, uh, that point to know, you know about network towers. Uh, or, for example, what Google is doing currently, uh, which is about Google Assistant or finding help on the road with Google Maps, it's so topical. It's, it's, you're, you're again, it's about how close to the queue you can get uh, for the consumer. And I think those are examples. But how that often I are agencies coming to you with an idea that's outdoor centric, saying, hey, this can work brilliantly if we do this? You know, akin to, let's say, what you guys do with, uh, let's say, Aero Bridges, right? Yes. Great media. Yeah. Yeah. So how often do agencies, and you know, throwing it open to all you guys, yeah. how often do agencies come up with outdoor-specific creative? Um, I hope I have, not my agency guys here, but <laughs> not enough according to okay. me. Uh, I mean, they're trying. I feel like agencies are trying, and they, they actually have a creative uh, in-house teams, you know, that are trying to work on things. But, but I think it, it's, it's, it's a multidimensional issue. Uh, like, why do we think only 2040 or 1020? Because because the breadth that is available in outdoor is much limited as compared to others. So I, I don't want to put the blame completely on the agencies. Uh, I think it's like one step from everybody and you sort of get to the focal point. Fantastic. Would you want to add anything to that specifically, uh, Anand? So yeah, uh, innovations, uh, where are they born? I mean, they, they're, they're born maybe, it, it has to be co-curated. So, so I would say a good brief from a marketer to the agency will definitely do the job. And as we uh, said, there has to be one big idea, which has to be understood at the ground, understood by the agency, understood by the creative folks in the agency, and you have to co-create uh, uh, innovative or, or a creative stuff. Uh, so, some, some of the stuff which we tried doing, although that idea came from a sales executive in mm -hmm. Kerala, uh, uh, and ours is a brand which is more into semi-urban and rural platform, was do branding around the sarpanches. So, so, so the entire concept is around creating um, a, and rural uh, population, you know, they still uh, do believe in, in the uh, key opinion leader like mm -hmm. sarpanches. So create them as sutradhars and give them the power to do some kind of branding. So even from a branded plate of that Sarpanch with your brand logo, to the stuff where they do their daily meetings, to the schools and stuff. So that kind of stuff was done where this key opinion leader, of course, felt that this village is, is something which, there is an enablement of a financial services, mm -hmm. which is via the Sutradhar. So some of those things. But where did the idea germinate from? And, and today we've got more than 20,000 sutradhars across the country. And this is something which, you know, which is in the, in the uh, you know, most uh, 
uh, rural parts of the country, not many would see in a Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore kind of a scenario. But yeah, that is an innovative way of handling it. Uh, that's where you are involving the consumer. That's where you are engaging the consumer. Uh, so, but, but the ideation came from a sales executive out sure. of Kerala. Sure. So, so I'm saying hence, uh, unlike other license Raj, there is no license which you get for creativity. It can come from anybody. The idea is to have believe in this big idea, do a proper briefing, co-curate, and I'm sure there is something innovative which will come out. And I'm, and I'm sure with the executors sitting around, maybe one of the, you know, most of the best executors are here in the room. I'm sure that will, the guys will make it happen. I think an interesting point that you made just reminds me of something I was speaking to uh, Sundar, who was the former head of uh, Times Out of Home, and he mentioned a, a key point is that in a lot of the airports, you actually had the advantage of where you could actually have a vehicle placed and people could come closely and examine a dashboard. So this whole thing became more than just an outdoor exercise. People could actually take a good look at the car, could break a, you know, take a few pictures, could also kind of get themselves registered for a test drive when they get back home. So I think making the whole thing into an integrated offering, not just looking at it as purely as a outdoor medium, but how can it help me push through the entire sales funnel? You know, from attention to interest to desire to action to immersion to experience. I think that's the challenge that, uh, uh, you know, that, that's the ask from the industry. So if I can quickly summarize some of the asks of the panel, I think clearly we've said this before, we'll say this again, I think good believable, real metrics. I think that's absolutely important. We are custodians of somebody else's money. We need to justify that spend. We need good, hard metrics. So I think that's uh, table stakes. I think from the agencies, I think very clearly the need for better quality creative. Hopefully we should see you know, the next generation of good creative guys coming from digital, the next Piyush Pandey's and Prasun Joshi's and Josie Paul's actually you know, creating some great outdoor. I think not being the gatekeeper and now and then fostering an interaction between the client and the outdoor owner, I think very important. I think third is recognizing the fact that the digital ecosystem is opening up so many more opportunities. Your out of home is not a static billboard anymore. It's an opportunity to foster so many consumer interactions. I clearly recognize that digital is going to be the next big growth area. Right now, maybe 1% of all outdoors are kind of digitally enabled. Hopefully in a few years time, it'll be a lot more. But that's really not about running a 30 second TV ad on a billboard. I think the idea is how do you make this whole digital more immersive and experiential. I think that's really what the takeaway is. I'm going to wrap this up a little early because I understand there will be a lot of questions. I know a lot of you have grouses, issues, complaints, concerns with marketeers. Uh, so here's your opportunity. Go ahead and shoot. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Well, now. A lot of people have already uploaded their questions, and there are quite a few, so I'm going to request Mr. Sundar Hemrajani to kindly join us. Sir, have you got your three questions ready? Yes, all right, well, the iPad's in hand, and we have Mr. Sundar Hemrajani joining us, co-founder and CEO in Con Strategy Advisors, formerly Managing Director at Times OH, sir. In fact, uh, Vasant had asked me to restrict myself to three questions because once I get going, I can speak the whole day. So uh, just I'll take 30 seconds uh, because the issue is relevant. And um, uh, you know, having experienced digital out of home at the airport, I thought there were, I would say, two or three C's which were extremely important for our success. One was the content. I think some of you referred to the content. Then I would add creativity as a separate C, because if you look at the format, et cetera, creativity does become important. And the third C, which somehow has not got referred, is capability. You see, everybody has done traditional out of home. You know, the billboards, the, you know, the bus shelters and street furniture. Now, our experience was that when you put the same team selling digital, digital requires a completely different level of capability. And media owners need to invest in digital, in, in building capability. If you try and sell you know, digital like you are selling a billboard on the street, it won't work. 
So I think capability is something which I would just like to add on uh, to the discourse. You know, maybe sometime tomorrow, uh, somebody will uh, sort of catch up. Oops. Now to the three questions. It was not very easy to sort of, somebody needs to help me because this has gone on a blink. Should I? The first question is uh, from uh, Deepa Gupta, uh, Madison uh, out of home. The question is, and what I'll do is I'll shoot the question to Lloyd and he can decide <laughs> who, who will answer that question. <laughs> Agencies are working hard to provide creative and media solutions best suited to the brand requirement. However, in most cases, it usually comes to rate comparison. Uh -huh. You know, the, it is a rate war which the agencies sort of fight with each other. And basis which the campaigns are executed by marketeers. How do we ensure relevant business solution and quality planning versus not a rat race, but a rate race? <laughs> where, you know, there is this tendency to commoditize, you know, boil down everything to the rate instead of the quality and to win the business. So that's the question. That's a great question. Uh, you know, Pramod, can I ask you, you guys are pretty large buyers, and I'm sure it's more than cost per square feet that you keep in mind. Correct. So uh, in a way, I agree with that equation. That happens. I'm not denying that. But uh, that doesn't happen only to outdoor. The way it happens to outdoor is a different thing, but the way it happens to other media is also in a similar way. Like, for example, we don't have a fixed digital agency. What we do is we give plan to multiple agencies and we select the good plan. And when I say good plan, it's not only efficiency, it's also what different thing plan is offering to the table. Same thing happens with uh, out, of, out of home. Uh, but it's, I would like to say that it's not just rate, okay? Most of the times I have picked up the market and we have two agencies on panel. And uh, it's not only on the rate I give a business to the agency, but it's also the different thing or what kind of uh, additional things agency is bringing to the table. Uh, but if I have partly answered the question, but the other part, which is what agencies can bring to the table and how they can be a better partner, I think uh, uh, the way we work, I think it's marketeer's fault also. What happens is when uh, other uh, creative agencies uh, are part of the brief from the beginning, uh -huh. in fact, before the beginning, that this is my problem and what should I do, the brief starts there, yeah. you know. But what happens with outdoor is, once my brief is ready, my concept is ready, or oh, this is my concept, this is what you have to work, this is how the brief goes. So uh, that fault lies with advertisers also, right. okay. I think somewhere we have to take that one step ahead and tell them, ki, okay, this is what we are thinking and can you help us in doing something and making, this, making it a better plan. So I, I, in a way, uh, agree to that question. And at the same time, I think it's a joint responsibility between agencies and advertisers to take that time. So sure. Ankit, do you want to add to this? Um, yeah, sure. So I think, uh, and again, it must sound like a broken record by now. <laughs> but uh, the fact is that uh, when you don't have metrics to back you up and you're buying almost a quasi-commodity, then cost becomes a very, very key uh, essential part of the evaluation, right? And uh, while I agree with uh, Pramod that we need to look beyond cost and we need to look at, you know, other factors, the fact is that efficiency will have higher weightage because honestly you don't know what you're buying, right? And beyond a point, if you don't know how to measure what you're buying and, you know, how much you're buying it at, the best way to do it is to figure out that uh, you've bought it at the lowest possible cost. And that's really, again, right. uh, boiling down to the genesis of the problem, which is measurement. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Ankit. Sundar, next yeah. question. And, uh, a related one, I mean, just a one-liner. Uh, would you consider, because every time the media owners approach you directly, because they know their media, they know the location, they know the dynamics, you know, the agency gets upset. Would you consider telling the agency that bring the media owner along and we would like to discuss it? Yeah. Or would you just leave it to the agency? I, I don't see an issue in, uh, in the three parties sitting together and figuring something out. I really don't. 
So I mean, this this has started happening across all other mediums as well. Yeah. You know, when when you do a deal with a television giant, you do have a a tripartite kind of a meeting. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I think that answers. Yeah, and that yeah, I think will reassure nice. a lot of people in this room. Of course. Yeah. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that, so, so that's the comfort between you and your agency. And a lot of time in these tripartites, as a client or as an agency, as a partner, you will come out as a true winner. So, Absolutely. In, if you're on the same page. Yeah, in my case, agencies tell, Ki, please meet Pramod, don't talk to us, you know, better explain <laughs> your media to Pramod. So, this happens, so it's, bet, you know, the, it, this is your relationship with the agency. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, this could be an exception. My only kind of takeaway from this is that very often I think marketeers will need to foster some of these tripartite relationships, exactly, yeah. saying that, you know, okay, can we see guys, you know, like the larger out of home buyers, the airport guys, concessionaires? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll need to do it. Work At a large this. level, yes, Lloyd, this started happening. Okay. In fact, yeah, uh, personally, I have been practicing it for uh, a few years. Okay. Because that's, that's very transparent, that's very healthy, and that's something which is constructive. Okay. I yeah, but Lloyd Hoyt said that I think there needs to be some method to the madness, right? Because finally, this is a fragmented space. And while, you know, each owner has his own uh, inventory, one must understand that for a marketer to meet 400, 500 media owners True. becomes almost a killer, right, in terms of my time. Uh, and therefore, you know, there is a role that the agency plays. Of course, there is a role in terms of building a solution that is rich and is, is a win-win for everyone involved. Sure. But uh, I think the primary uh, partner still needs to be the agency, right? Absolutely. And then you can build from there on together. Absolutely. Okay, we'll go on to the second question. Yep. This is from uh, Shivangi Purohit of Bullseye Media. After reinventing and bringing content as needed, will the outdoor be able to revolutionize and change the pattern and habit of marketeers in the budget spends? Are you willing to do something proactively? Could you repeat that question, please, once again? Sorry? Yeah, I, think, I think the point that is, this question is about yeah. is that having heard you know, some of the feedback from the industry, sure. do you see marketeers now reposing some more budget into out of home versus the industry average of 5 to 6% where it is today? Yeah. So anybody yeah. wants to take a... I, I, I think so, it's... So, yeah. please I think it depends on, uh, like someone said that earlier, that uh, what your need, communication need is, right? And then the media mix is a combination of answering to that need as well as achieving a certain amount of reach. So, so I don't think you can generalize this uh, as such, but if, if, if the campaign demands, and we've seen that in our case with, uh, with like I said, the car category, clearly, I mean, uh, we, we would look to up it next year, not to decrease it. Okay. Yeah, there is a reality right now, and we have to admit, accept that. See, uh, digital is growing, right? So just to give you a fact, uh, Hotstar on IPL viewership has, in last three years, has grown up by 400%. So media consumption is changing. And somewhere, as soon as there's a media change in media consumption, as marketeers, we have to reflect our spends as per the change in media habits, yeah. right? Uh, so not only media consumption is changing. If you look at uh, the way companies are, are in, brands or advertisers are arranging their spends, my performance or acquisition spends, we call activation spends for, on digital, the pockets for that is deepening. Uh -huh. Because there is ROI, I can measure that ROI. I know how I, what I'm putting in there and what I'm getting, right? So if that's happening, so that's definitely a bigger challenge for outdoor. If there is a solution for that and something happens in that arena, Definitely, we are open. It's not that we are restricted. We never decided this media we never want. This is now like that. It, it never happens like that. Sure. It's what is the communication objective, what is the end result we want, and therefore what media suits to that communication objective. And basis that we decide. But somewhere ROI and data-driven marketing, like I said earlier, is taking important role. Okay, and if that's not happening in outdoor media place, that's, that's why there's a big hurdle. Okay, uh, now the last question. I related to what you just said, this is from Gauri Shankar of Mavin Labs. In absence of the metrics and measurement, which all of you sort of unanimously said, what are the current methods that the brand owners use to verify the efficacy of out-of-home campaigns? Yeah, I like to take that one. <laughs> let's, let's hear the true story. Yeah. How do you do it today? Sure. Yeah, in fact, I there's was... no metrics, there's no measurement. 
Yeah, correct. Uh, and in fact, that's what I was just about to answer to promote that, uh, that one way to overcome this limitation that we've been trying to do, it is an expensive proposition for the brand marketeer, is to do post-tests. So what we do is regular after uh, anything that's more than a 1 million USD kind of a campaign, we would do a post-test to actually arrive at what the depth of awareness from outdoor has been. So that's one way of doing it. And if you do, uh, let's say, three consecutive ones, you'll be able to see a trend line clearly as a marketer. Uh -huh. So that's clearly one solution. But okay. yes, cost us money. <laughs> OK. Anything from you? Yeah, so uh, look, for us, I, I don't think we have uh, unfortunate, fortunate. Uh, we never deploy outdoor as a single medium. Right? Yep. Uh, in most cases, it's part of a mix. And uh, it's yep. rather difficult for us to tease out what's the role that outdoor played in isolation. Uh -huh. Uh, having said that, of course, there are tools like cross media and so on, which one deploys every now and then. But as Gayatri said, it's not, you can't do it every time yeah. you activate campaigns, right? So you do learn, you, uh, you, you take it with a pinch of salt, you move on, and you try to keep learning as you go along. Uh, the only other way uh, of looking at this is, uh, you know, the claimed source of awareness when you're looking at brand tracks. And, but again, you know, empirically we know it's that different. TV will overshadow all other it sources of awareness, advantage. right? So sure. it's an inherent disadvantage that outdoor has. But as of now, that's how we do it. Sure. Another one last shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I practiced that because uh, the kind of audience we deal. Uh, and a lot of time uh, we do a specific OH campaigns, or rather I would say specific outdoor campaigns. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so it all depends on the objective of the communication. Uh, if it's driving consideration, we do gauge that as well. In fact, uh, a lot of places in rural, we found that a missed call number basis of uh, matrix and, and the return of investment, we, we found that. So so the, so a lot of these are, as the attribution of matrix is not there, so these things are also not very organized. Right. But there are un unorganized ways of evaluating whether it's worked or not worked. But for my set of audience, which is rural and semi-urban, it, uh, you know, we have the last mile, the consideration set, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the call to action getting and basis that the ROI. Okay. Okay. I guess that, that's a sure. very honest answer. I mean, everybody's given. Now, Lloyd, you get to choose the best question. <laughs> Do we get to vote, Lloyd? Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to say something? Oh, feel free. I think, think for me the third one, because it was more solution-oriented as a question. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK, you I guys agree? <laughs> Which is the best question of Which the three? Which one did you like? The third one. The third one. She's saying the one on metrics. Yeah. Uh, I think the first one is what? How about you? Yeah, Quickly. I... You take a call. <laughs> OK, so we'll go with the first one. First one? Yes, that is. <laughs> OK, the first one is uh, Deepa Gupta, Madison OH. Well, the checks being brought on the stage. Sir, can we please request you to join Thanks, guys. our Thanks, moderator guys. and our panelists. Deepa Gupta, congratulations. You walk away with 10,000 rupees by Alak Advertising and Publicity. Congratulations. We'd like to say a big thank you to oh, our moderator, Mr. Lloyd Mathias, our panelists, come, come, Mr. Pramod Patil, Ms. Gayatri Oja, Mr. Anand Dube, and Mr. Ankit Desai. Thank you so much, Mr. Sundar Hemrajani. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our panel discussion on, on a very happy note, especially for Deepa. Please put your hands together for her, and especially for all our panelists, our moderator,